about our host, OJ Tokes, please visit his website, ojtokes.com. That is O J T as in Tom, O K as in Kite, S as in Steve.com, ojtokes.com. Welcome again to the While You Are Single podcast and enjoy the show. Here is OJ Tokes. Hello, how you doing? Welcome again to another edition of the While You're Single podcast. I hope the podcast has been a blessing to you. If you happen to be in the Houston area on April the 17th, I'd like to invite you to join us for our While You're Single service, which will be taking place in Library 100, Houston Baptist University, 7.45 p.m. It's a Friday night. Hope you can come and hope you can bring a friend as well. We'll be talking about I Thought It Was You. In other words... Have you ever felt like you were meant to marry someone or felt like God was telling you somebody was your mate? How do you clarify that? How do you confirm that? Does that even happen? Does God do that? How can you tell if someone is your mate? And what happens when you think someone is your mate, but the person ends up with somebody else? Well, join us and we'll discuss this again, April 17th, 7.45 p.m. Library 100, Houston Baptist University. For more information, go to whileyouaresingle.org. This week, we're starting with From Closed Doors to Open Doors. A closed door is just an open door to something or someone else better for you. Find out more as you listen to the While You're Single podcast for this week. Father God, I thank you for another opportunity to hear from you tonight. We ask that you open our hearts to heed your word, open our ears to hear your word, open our eyes to perceive your word, open our minds to understand your word. Give us the wisdom to apply your word, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, that not only do we hear and not only do we receive, but we'll put your word into practice. We thank you that nothing will hold anyone back from receiving from you tonight, Father God. We thank you that your word is a seed that will be sown in the good ground of our hearts, and it will be bear fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Many years ago, about 13 years ago, I used to live in Richmond, Virginia. This was around 2002. I began to desire to be in a relationship. I wanted to get married, and I began to contemplate and think about, okay, how is this going to happen? At the time, there was this lady that looked like a great candidate to be my wife. I believe that she was the one. She looked like the one. She talked like the one. She walked like the one. I felt like the birds were singing. She was the one. The dogs were barking. She was the one. And I felt she was the one. But I needed to cover my bases first. So I went to pray. And my conversation with God, the spirit of my prayer basically was, listen, God, I don't have time to date somebody for a few weeks, a few months, a few years, only to discover that they're not the one. I don't have time for that, Father. So I put it before God. I said, God, if this is you, Lord, let your will be done. And if it's not, let your will be done. Even though I prayed that, I'm thinking to myself, I think she's the one. She is the one. So I already prayed. So I walked to the lady. I went to her to tell her my feelings for her. And I was right. She was the one. Just one problem. I wasn't the one. She was the one for another guy who she told me she was interested in. She was not interested in me. I was turned down. I was disappointed, but I took it on the chin. And while I was dealing with that disappointment, a friend of mine calls me and asks if I will speak in the True Love Wait seminar. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just got rejected, which is my emphasis on the closed door tonight, rejection. 
I just got rejected from being in a relationship. I just experienced a closed door. And God, are you telling me that that closed door is an open door for me to speak in the True Love Wait seminar? Are you kidding me? And that's a prime example of how often God uses your lowest point as your turning point. So here I am feeling like, okay, God, what do I have to do about this? What, what do you want me to talk about? And during that time, I felt, I kept hearing the phrase, while you are single. In other words, while you are single, what do you need to be doing to prepare yourself to be in a relationship? Because one of the things I felt like God was asking me was, are you ready to be in a relationship? And the answer was an absolute no. Okay, while you are single, what do you need to be doing to prepare to position yourself to be in a relationship. It was along those lines that I shared a sermon while you were single. That was a sermon 13 years ago. At the time, I thought it was just a sermon. But what was funny was the rejection, the closed door from the lady opened the door for me to speak on while you were single. Opened the door for the book that came from that while you were single. Opened the door to this ministry while you were single. I didn't know at the time. But that closed door was just an open door to other things that God had for me. I want to encourage everyone tonight as I discuss rejection as a closed door. Everybody deals with rejection. If you've ever been told no, if you've ever been opposed, resisted, refused, overlooked, passed over, repudiated, divorced, shunned, snobbed, pushed back, hindered, attacked. They are all forms of rejection, and everybody goes through rejection. If you don't understand anything I say tonight, if you don't remember anything I say tonight, I want you to remember this, which is something that John Kay had referenced earlier. Being rejected does not necessarily mean something is wrong with you. It usually means something or someone is wrong for you. Let me say that again. Being rejected does not necessarily mean something is wrong with you. It usually means something or someone is wrong for you. Over the years, it has come to my understanding that for the most part, there are three main reasons we experience closed doors from people, or three main reasons we experience rejection from people. Not from God, from people. Number one, people reject us when we don't meet their expectations. In this case, we get rejected for being wrong or doing wrong. Being wrong or doing wrong. By being wrong or doing wrong, we didn't meet their expectations. By being wrong, I mean we're wrong for what they want. We didn't do anything wrong. We are just not what they're looking for. We're not qualified. We don't fit the profile. We don't have the requirements. We don't have the education. We don't have the looks. We don't have the connection. We don't fit their profile. We're not qualified. That's what I mean by being wrong. For example, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. 1 Samuel 16, God tells Samuel to find a new king for Israel, and Samuel is instructed to go to a man whose name is Jesse. Jesse has seven sons. God tells Samuel, go to Jesse's house. The new king of Israel is going to come from one of Jesse's sons. So Samuel goes, and he gets there. He says, the firstborn named Eliab, God bless you. And Samuel says, surely this is the guy that God wants to be the king. And God said, no, I have refused him, or I have rejected him. 
I do not look at people the way man looks at people. Man looks at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. But God refused. He rejected Eliab and the other brothers from being king because they were not the people he was looking for. Based on the text, it's not like they did anything. It's just they didn't fit the profile. Okay? So that's what I mean by being wrong. You're just not, we're not just, we're just not what they're looking for. By doing wrong, I mean actually doing something wrong, unethical behavior. For example, in Genesis chapter 37, Genesis 39 rather, verse 8, we know the story of Joseph. Some of you know the story of Joseph. He ends up as a slave in Potiphar's house. And Potiphar's wife wanted to do the wrong thing with him. She wanted to sleep with him. She's married to somebody else, and she wants to sleep with Joseph. But Joseph, in Genesis 39, 8, refused. He rejected her because she's doing the wrong thing, seducing him, and she wants to do the wrong thing, sleep with him. So he rejected her, giving an example of doing wrong. So the first reason we experience rejection from people is when we don't meet expectations by either being wrong, we're not what they're looking for, or doing wrong. Now, perhaps some of you are listening and saying, Tokes, I get that. I, I understand. I understand if I'm not what they're looking for. I understand if I don't have the looks, I don't have the education, I don't have the resources, I don't have the connections. I get that. I understand if I have an attitude problem. I get that. I understand if I do the wrong things. I, I understand if I'm a criminal. I understand that. But Tokes, what I don't understand is the fact that I have the looks, and I have the education, and I have the connections, I have the resources, I have the character, I walk in integrity, I'm a godly person. So Tokes, why am I still experiencing rejection? I hear the women say, the one a godly man, the one a good man, but I'm still getting rejected. I hear the men say, the one a godly man, a godly woman. <laughs> I hear the men say, the one a godly woman, but nobody's asking me out. They're always turning me down. I'm tired of people telling me, you're such a beautiful lady. Why aren't you married yet? <laughs> you're such a sweetheart. You will make a good wife. Why aren't you married yet? You're such a good guy. Why aren't you married yet? Tokes, explain that to me. Not only do I have a job as a man, I own my company, but I'm still getting rejected. What is wrong with me, Tokes? Because... Your first point doesn't make any sense to me. What is wrong with me? I'll tell you what's wrong with you. You're asking the wrong question. You shouldn't be asking yourself what's wrong with you. You should be asking yourself what's right with you. Which brings me to the second reason we experience rejection from people. The first, people reject us when we don't meet their expectations. The second, people reject us when we exceed their expectations. In this case, you get rejected for being right or doing right. Being right or doing right. By being right, I mean you're just too good for what you're trying to get into. You're too good for what you're trying to get into. This is where A guy rejects a lady because her pay grade is higher than his. She has her house. He lives in an apartment with his mom. <laughs> his mom's apartment. Now, don't misunderstand me. Don't misunderstand me. I used to live with my mom. And I believe I was a good guy. Thank you for listening to the While You Are Single podcast. We hope that you were informed, inspired, and impacted. OJ Tooks has written a life-changing book titled...
rejected for a purpose, how God uses rejection to help you find and fulfill your destiny. If you would like to learn more about the book, please visit ojtokesministries.org. That is ojtokesministries.org. If you like Christian inspirational hip-hop, check out OJ Tokes' Christian inspirational hip-hop album, A Breath of Fresh Air, which is now available on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, and other music outlets. You can also learn more about his music by going to ojtokesministries.org. Thanks again for listening to the While You Are Single podcast, which OJ Tokes presents weekly, every Monday. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, please share with your friends and join us again next Monday. Until then, take care and stay blessed.